This is Matthew McConaughey. Natalie Portman. James Patterson. Michael Ian Black. And you are listening to Five Questions with Dan Chabell. Lucy, welcome to Five Questions. Thank you. Kia ora. I'm happy to be here. How did seeing someone like yourself being represented as a kid inspire you to be an actress? And what type of role model do you want to be for other children? Hmm. Um, as a kid, never thought about it. It was really, it was that my mother was a woman who was out in the community doing stuff and my parents always told me I could do anything. I could bend spoons with my mind if I wanted to. So I realized, apart from spoons, which I've always failed at, um, I always believed there was nothing I couldn't do. And um, I think that belief has carried me some amazing places. It doesn't matter. It's helpful. It's more helpful to that that I can't do stuff. Yeah, I mean, clearly your parents really encourage you. They've encouraged me. I mean, they're a huge competitive advantage to being. My parents encourage you. No, my parents encouraged me. Your parents encouraged me. Oh, you. I didn't know they even knew you. I'm sure they would um, encourage I, me too, though. They sound nice. Oh, wait a minute. I missed the first part of that. The second part of the question. What was it about kids? You being a role model for other kids. Wow, I don't really like the idea of being a role model. I'm, you know, barely be a role model to my own kids. It's it's a little bit more the you do you thing, and be, uh, that your um. But, uh, this is my advice to parents, if, if anybody were ever to ask me, is let them be themselves. You know, like foster whatever they're interested in. Foster that, like pour fertilizer, give them. You know, if they're into fish, take them to the aquarium or take them to fish stores and just let them be there and, and read them books. My kid made me read the Audubon Society, like the books of of like the, I don't know, is it teleology? Whatever, the, you know, the, the fish comes from ichthyensis, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, there was no text in it, right? There is, there is no fiction. I had to read these nonfiction, like descriptions of the fish for for years that's what he was interested in it was really boring for me but the, he's a you know an amazing young scientist now and uh anyway whatever your kids are into uh love it feed it in what ways did your notable role as xena warrior princess change your life and how were you able to evolve instead of being boxed into similar roles Ah, uh, how did it change? It changed my life in every single way. It gave me um, uh, a work ethic and and um, a lot of friends. And I met my husband on it. Then I got kids, and I was able to buy a house. I mean, it changed my life in every way. But it also put me in touch with an amazing fan base who are um, very active in their own communities. And that was part of the Xena ethos, which was to be part of the greater good. So. Not about serving yourself, but how do you enrich your community? What are you? What can you do within your sphere of influence? So um, they, they, their work has given meaning to my life. Did I answer to... your question? Well, I'm, I'm sure. Pe- I'm sure people have been posting, and you've seen that impact that you've had, and you know, they've been champions for their own communities, which is always good. And we need more of them. So that's a, that's a nice legacy yeah. to leave. Yeah. I mean, the, I se- the second part that. was about, you know, how did you evolve instead of being boxed into similar roles? Like, like with Xena? Um, well, there were no similar roles. There hasn't been a similar role, maybe, you know, Wonder Woman. One in the last there, I guess there have been a lot of action, uh, action female roles that have, Model far more, but um, anyway, those were not they, they were not offered to me. I'm not very, I'm not very interested. I don't know how I got into action, honest to God. That is so not something that I did. <laughs> I hated doing it every day, every day of Zeno. I just hated the fights, but I didn't have the luxury to hate the fights. You had to do it, so I just like gritted my teeth and and, and pushed on through. That was one of my lessons. You know, if you do get into your field of interest, let's just say acting because that's what I know, 
at some point, somebody's going to come along with a better offer. They're going to say, we want you to star in a movie with this really, this big star playing his duplicitous wife, for example. And you're going to go, oh, I want to do that. Can I just leave this TV show behind and go and do that? And you, you can't because your contract won't allow you. Or in some way, it will screw your, your original job. You have to stick to the net. You have to honor your contract. Don't be a whinger. That means a whiner. Don't be a whinger and um, be grateful. Just be good at what you're doing right now because work, whatever you're doing now, is going to breed more work. Yeah. So um, when you don't know what else to do, stick to the knitting. Just do your work and do it as well as you can. It will breed more work further on. I so agree. And how has your role in Life is Murder both challenging for you and refreshing to you as an actor? That's a really good question, Dan. I'm glad you asked. It's really challenging because I have been in nearly every frame of it. So it's it's the the schedule is really punishing. I mean so was Xena, but I was 30 years younger then and and um uh it's a lot of dialogue. It's just wall to wall keeping up keeping ahead for those four and a half months that I'm doing it plus in times of COVID it's very hard to produce TV shows it's hard to do business everywhere I know um our business also very badly affected anywho the way it has fresh freed me up and freshened me up is I'm able to be so much more myself in this yeah. role like um <clears throat> you know she's got a she's got a, a I'm taking the realm of the little kooky. She's a little bit crazy. She's trans. The rest, role is written to be transgressive, and I'm just allowed to be. She's more like me than any other character I've ever played. I'm allowed to put myself into it. And through the show, what message are you trying to put out there about men and women? The role's about men and women. You know, we've got a, ours is jealousy zone, so. Um, I don't know if people notice, but there there are relationships going on in um, within the, our our little character, our family of characters. Um, but if somebody has, um, let me make this a little bit. I'll cut it down, okay? Because I just are you. Is this for kids? Who who's your audience? Uh, and anyone from twenty two to about thirty six. Right. Not, not for seven-year-olds. Okay. So in this um, show, it's a jealousy-free zone. So if somebody's having relations with somebody else, nobody gets upset and nothing bad happens to them because we didn't want the, the old thing that happens is when your hero or one of the other characters has a love interest and you've got to kill the love interest because yeah. you just can't have those kind of relations. Well, we don't find that modern. We find that's, that's a, a boring old trope. It's not true necessarily in life, and um, very seldom is that true. And that people in this world are allowed to explore their relationships and their bodies and their and their you know have a full life without punishment. So, what we're trying to say is that these are mature, um, mature human beings who aren't hung up on any of that stuff. They're not hung up on gender. They're not hung up on uh, race. They're not hung up on... They're, they're getting on with their lives. And it's kind of... It's the world that we want to be in. Definitely. Yeah, it really is grounded in reality in today's world. And what's your best piece of career advice? <laughs> My best piece of... I don't know. Okay. I don't know if this is career advice. My, by the way, my house is not this boring. All right. This is, this is, I'm in a tiny house and I'm painting it up to be completely nuts. And um, like, it's, it's very, it's, very, it's a little bit twee. Like my husband's like, it's twee. And I'm like, yeah, it's twee. That's right. And I dig it. So um, I'm trying to, figuring out how to live in a tiny house. You've got to have a place for everything. You can't have much because you don't have many classes. Anyway, you got the boring view. Best piece of advice? 
Where was I going with that? Um, sometimes it's helpful to think that life is long. Everybody goes, life is short, life is short. No, 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 life is long. You're going to have a chance to, like, change and change. You can change your mind. You don't have to decide now and, and stick with it forever. It's not, it doesn't have to be that way, you know. Like, um, you, you'll start, you, this happens a lot in America. Kids are taught that they um, have to decide kind of, the parents have to decide what elementary school to send them, which will feed them into the right high school, that will feed them into the right colleges. That's terrible. You're putting your bloody five or eight-year-old on some some projected track that may not be suitable. You can't know everything about our children. You know, my kids just are so surprised me. They've been right every time about themselves. So now I just like mm, what support their decisions because they're 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 hip to what school's right for them often. And um how the hell did I get onto this? Well, it's very normal. I'm just adding on. It's very normal that someone who's in one career now did not go to school for that career or went to school for that career yeah. and then had a shift. Yeah. So relax. You know, do what you think you want to do. Inevitably, that first year or two is going to make you reassess and move you in a different direction. And that's good. That means you're alive. They're alive to possibilities and you're becoming aware of what you're good at and what rewards you and like, you don't have to know now. And even if you're 40 and you want to change, just change. This is your life and it's long. And then you can change again. Like, um, yeah, don't, don't, don't get yourself stuck in your own mind. Don't let that. anybody stick you there with them. That's yeah. really good advice. And I actually have not heard that one before, which is, which is great and kind of rare. It's been 3000 interviews. So you figure, but yeah, I mean, life oh. is longer than we think. <laughs> life is longer than we think and sort of shorter than we think at the same time. Well, that's Anything right. Can but I tell you what, <laughs> sometimes you don't have to think what's right, what's <laughs> true, what's objective, true. You go, what's helpful? Yes. Do with what it, it help that empowers you and, and and makes you feel that you're, you're going to be all right. I mean, like I say, my little delusion that I could do anything, being spoons with my mind, has got me into really cool, cool places in life. I really recommend it. My parents had told me that I had to be really – you know, um, I'll get a, so only study something that's going to give you a job. I would not be an actor. That's oh, for sure. Yeah. Not a I'm not sure I would have listened to them. I would, I'm not sure I would have listened to them, but um, uh, that's the nature of true. If you have a vocation, you don't listen to anybody anyway because you just can't help yourself. But if you don't have a vocation, a calling, try different things. Keep changing your mind till you find your groove, you know. Absolutely. Well, that's great advice. And thank you so much for being on the show. Pleasure.